Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to present you the intake bridge location element on this Mercedes A-Class from W169 generation with a four-cylinder engine. Also, I will show you a couple of tests you can do in case you got some trouble codes like P2004 or P2006. On other cars, this mechanism is known as intake manifold runner control valve. It's pretty much doing the same thing. And if you need to see how to remove the intake manifold on this car, there will be a link in the description below. It's kind of a long process and therefore I made this separate video. So let's see first how this intake bridge element works. The main purpose of this system is to change the airflow through the intake manifold when the car accelerates for better fuel economy and performance. So you can notice the intake manifold is divided in three parts. The first one is the part where the air goes through those long intake pipes when the car is idling. The second part is this side of the intake manifold where the air travels a shorter distance from the throttle body to the cylinders when the car accelerates. So if the air travels a shorter distance, it means it will have more speed when going into the cylinders. If the air goes into the cylinders with higher speed, it will mix better with the fuel and it will create compression into the cylinders more faster. Therefore, it will increase the power and also the fuel economy will be better. The third part is of course the intake bridge location element system which will make possible this switch of the airflow between the shorter and the longer way. The subcomponents of this system, let's call them like that, will be the vacuum solenoid, the vacuum check valve, the vacuum actuator which is basically a rubber membrane which contracts when vacuum is applied and move the bridge element itself inside here which I'm gonna remove and show you in a minute. Now that I present you the parts, let's see how they interact with each other. So when the car idles, we know that there is the maximum vacuum into the intake. So this hose right here is going to provide with vacuum to this separate chamber on the intake. This chamber is not connected to the main airflow channels, so it's sealed. And you can see the vacuum goes through this check valve, which allows basically the air to go out of the chamber, but not in. So during the normal driving, you will always have some vacuum stored into this chamber. But of course, you will have higher vacuum when idling also into this sealed chamber because it's connected directly through this hose and check valve. Since there will be kind of unlimited vacuum into this chamber when the car idles, the computer will open the solenoid and the vacuum will travel through the solenoid and compress this actuator with the rubber membrane which will also further pull this little lever, which will also move the bridge element to redirect the airflow inside the intake. Basically, when the car idles, the airflow will go through the long way and it will also accumulate vacuum inside the sealed chamber. Then when you accelerate, the computer will open the solenoid and the vacuum will move the flaps inside, allowing the air to flow through the short way into the cylinders. And the process is repeated all over again, depending on your driving style. Therefore, if you notice when suddenly accelerate this car, you will feel like there is an extra kick, like you will normally feel on a turbocharged or a supercharged vehicle. It's not that much, but still is there. And that's why there is this intake bridge system on the car. Now I'll open the bridge element or the runner control valve with the T30. The bolts are out. Wiggle this assembly out. Here you've got a rubber gasket. Now in this position, it will allow the air to go through the short way, direct into the cylinders. So obviously this position is for acceleration. So you can see inside how the holes are positioned. You can see the holes on the bridge element, which goes straight in like so. Also it's worth mentioning the spring, which is actually pulling this small lever back. It's located inside this small unit and it's actually critical for the system to work. Otherwise, the bridge element will move back and forth without control. Now you know how it works. Let's see what tests you can do to determine if one of these components is bad. For that, you'll need a hand vacuum pump and a 12 volt battery with some tiny probes. So first, apply vacuum through this check valve and block the end of this hose. I will use a lockable plier to do that. There is quite a large chamber, so you need to apply a lot of vacuum. My pump is broken. The zero is somewhere here. So now there is vacuum into the chamber. So when I release the lockable plier, the air from the atmospheric pressure should go into the chamber. So let's see. 
and it does. Now I will repeat the same test in order to verify if the check valve holds the vacuum inside the chamber. I will remove the vacuum pump from the check valve. Obviously you should not hear the air go inside the chamber. In my situation the check valve works, so I will release again the vacuum. Next you can check the vacuum actuator. Simply connect your vacuum pump and when applying vacuum the membrane should contract and pull the lever and it does. When I release the vacuum it should slowly release as well the lever and the lever should sit in its position for let's say 30 seconds if you hold the vacuum. Next to check the solenoid I will connect the vacuum pump on this tiny nozzle. When I apply 12 volts to the solenoid now I'm gonna replicate the vacuum from the intake. This should of course pull the lever. This is what the computer will do. We'll send 12 volts to the solenoid and pull this lever. Now when I release the 12 volts the vacuum will escape and the lever will come back. Here we go. Now I will repeat this test again. Now the vacuum cannot escape. If I remove the finger the membrane will come back. The air will come into the system here. So let's see. Here we go. Finally, you can remove the runner element and visually inspect it for cracks. You can see there are some sort of plastic rings similar to piston rings, which will seal each intake hole in order to get an even distribution of the airflow. Also, you can manually move the lever and check if the element moves. When installing it back, make sure that this rubber gasket stays on top first and you should be able to match the bolt holes. So before ending this video, it's worth to mention that this type of bridge element has a more reliable design compared to the version with flaps, because the one with individual flaps will be more likely to get clogged up or get worn up over time, since there are more moving parts involved. So fortunately, Mercedes did a good job in choosing this type of runner control system on the car. All right, guys, that was it. Now I'm going to go ahead and install back this intake manifold. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.